My name is Dr. John Wingard. I'm the director of the bone marrow transplant program and the heme malignancy program as well as the deputy director of the cancer center at the University of Florida. I'm a former president of ASBMT. In the early days of transplant, we did not have the tools to do HLA matching. And we didn't recognize the need that that was important for successful outcomes after transplant. I then went on to graduate from medical school, do my inter uh, internal medicine uh, training and my oncology fellowship. And ironically, I would choose to go into bone marrow transplant and George Santos would end up being my boss. And the reason for that is there had been tremendous strides made in just that short period of time of my training that made me realize that this had extraordinary hope for patients with very deadly disease and the scientific uh, advances that had been made were enormous. I wanted to be part of the excitement, uh, the scientific curiosity, and to be part of a growing vanguard of, of medical uh, science. So initially, there, were, there was no organization in which just several isolated uh, transplant programs. Uh, when I started, there were only uh, four or five transplant programs in the country. And there was no venue for people to come together to discuss scientific questions, to toss ideas back and forth, to uh, even talk about the practicalities of how to run a transplant program, to garner the resources to allow uh, adequate care for our patients nor did we have a, an opportunity to adequately advance the needs for research to the National Institute of Health. So uh, there was a group of a dozen or so individuals that came together and said, let's start having a meeting. There, uh, the initial meetings were, I think I would call them invigorating, challenging, and intimate. Uh, they took place in a ski resort, Keystone, in Colorado. It was uh, very invigorating because this was held at an altitude of 10,000 or 11,000 feet. So uh, one was uh, physically challenged and the meetings would begin in the morning at very early where there would be scientific sessions till lunchtime. The afternoons would be free for individuals to go skiing and then we would reconvene in the evenings and go till 10 or 11 o'clock and that everyone would retire, uh, retire to the fireside of the lodge and have a very intimate conversation. This was an extraordinary experience for a young uh, professional as such as I was at those times. I got to meet the leaders of the field. I got to uh, get to know them. Uh, to uh, participate in some very exciting conversations where we would toss ideas back and forth. There were a lot of opportunities for very small discussions uh, rather than huge presentations. And it was actually, those early years were exciting. Well, at the risk of forgetting very important and prominent individuals, I'll, I'll give a try. Uh, the early uh, individuals were uh, folks such as uh, Don Thomas, Rhina Storb, Keith Sullivan, Bob Gale, uh, Dick Champlin, Rick O'Reilly, George Santos, uh, Rain Sorrell. Uh, they, they were very in, uh, formative uh, figures in our field, but there were others as well, and of course during the first decade or two of the organization, the numbers of individuals uh, grew uh, quite dramatically. So when one looks at the field of bone marrow transplant, uh, I think there are lots of very promising uh, possibilities. No, no one knows the future, of course. 
Uh, certainly the outcomes have dramatically improved over the years and they continue to improve and there's a lot of reason to think that those improvements will continue and perhaps accelerate in the next decade. Uh, one of the potential threats uh, is the development of novel ways of using cells other than through the traditional transplant. Uh, and certainly uh, CAR T ther cell therapies are uh, coming and uh, they uh, also offer tremendous uh, potential. But we've also realized they have potential dangers as well, tremendous dangers. And uh, they, I don't see them as threats, but in fact, uh, they are expanding the opportunities. So in some cases, we will be using both in uh, tandem or uh, together. And I think that there are enormous possible uh, opportunities for novel ways to look at cells other than traditional uh, transplantation. Happy 25th anniversary ASBMT.